when I uh, opened my practice uh, eight years ago, I was planning to work out a pretty tight space. And I was kind of looking at, you know, I had to really do a, a, a very carefully selected uh, laser system or systems to, to uh, give me room to move this office. And um, that's when I chose uh, Cyton as my, the first laser in my office. And, you know, that laser is still going strong, is used, you know, probably six, eight, ten times a day. And, um, you know, has been a, not just a real workhorse, but um, continues to, you know, be upgraded, improved. And so it's still uh, a very integral part of my practice. And that's, you know, eight years later. Well, first of all, you know, I think of BBL as my go-to laser for anything red and brown. And um, I think that it works on the, the concept of, of uh, selective photothermolysis. Uh, and it's, what's nice about the uh, BBL is there are multiple filters in the laser that allow you to um, kind of select a safe wavelength to start treating um, you know, most skin types um, so that you can kind of say, what I'm really trying to treat here is brown. So therefore you kind of go to the filters that really help you with browns the most. Uh, there's total flexibility as far as adjusting the energy levels, uh, the speed with which you deliver the energy, temperature, and um, that allows you to give um, a relatively comfortable treatment and um, a safe treatment. I think the biggest issue is uh, kind of deciding on uh, what the skin type of the patient is, you know, and what their con uh, natural skin can tolerate, uh, determining whether or not they're tanned. Uh, because the tan kind of changes everything about that uh, decision tree. And then also just what you're trying to treat. Um, you know, is this just kind of diffuse pigmentation from ages or years of sun exposure? Uh, or are we starting to show, you know, uh, hints of melasma starting to appear in the picture? Uh, my ideal candidate is, um, I call it my Santa Cruz um, patient. Um, we go through Santa Cruz all the time. In Santa Cruz, as you know, is a beachside town where everyone is, you know, surfing out there in the sun, beach walking. And I think everyone in Santa Cruz um, has come to the conclusion that that's just a natural skin for them. But they're, they are just weathered, sun battered, pigmented um, patients who just think that's the norm. Well, all that can actually be removed with, with BBL or significantly improved. I think um, that. One, one of the things I think is beneficial about broadband light is everyone benefits from it. And as a derm, you know, it goes beyond just the appearance of the skin. It is the texture. It is the quality of the skin. And what I love most about um, being a part of the Cyton family is we are taking people's skin and we are making it in its most healthiest condition. If they go on the journey with you as their provider and seek that initial series of three treatments and then commit to a minimum of two or four completely throughout their lifetime um, it benefits everyone from 18 to 80 and as you said earlier the, the broadband light because of the technology we're able to cast a wider net and, and truly treat skin types one through five and there's no other device out on the market that can do that right you just have to be be willing to live with your natural skin tones and not you know not push the tan i mean i, I literally have patients who who come in and I'm just like I can't treat you. you. You're so tanned from that vacation that, you know, I will I will uh, you know potentially injure you. Um, I think the other thing you mentioned, uh, Daryl, was that uh, is really uh, an amazing feature is there's more and more evidence to show that there's a rejuvenating effect from broadband light. And I don't think it's just the specific wavelength to treat the the reds or the browns, but it's also just that full spectrum of light that goes all the way up into the um, um, you know, the higher wavelengths uh, and, you know, almost the, the, the near infrared sort of wavelengths. And those actually have an impact on just the, the uh, rejuvenation of deeper layers of skin. So that, you know, people who really kind of get into a, um, a, a series of BBLs on a regular basis, I think you said two to four for life. I'm like two to four each year for the rest of your life. Right. Um, right. Really see that their skin literally stops aging. And that was something that really intrigued me when Stanford did a study looking at what's going on here. And they found out that people who did broadband light on a regular basis you know, actually showed that their 
um, their chromosomal behavior was more like a 20-year-old than the person their age. So it shuts down the aging genes in their skin and you know keeps that senescent sort of change that can kind of almost happen overnight in some at some points uh, from happening. And it, it's it, the study that you mentioned is amazing, and we're so proud of it because we're the only medical device that has really been IRB approved to show that initial and repeated treatments actually do change the genetic expression of the skin. And that study is out there online. It's the um, Stanford Forever Young BBL study, but looking at the 2300 RNA specifically involved in aging, every single person that has this treatment from you and an advanced provider um, knows that over half of those, in most cases they showed in the study, became reactivated. So we also have photo retrospective studies to show people 10 years later, 11 years later, even though chronologically they've aged, when put up in front of blinded evaluators looking at their photos, most of them are erroneously guessed for being a decade or more younger than they are. So this is not just the treatment that gives you beauty today. It's something that really has lasting benefits. Again, if you if you stay with the journey and protect your skin from the sun as you should do anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, also I think too that you know, we have the Vizia system and that one actually allows you to, to assess you know, chronologic age versus um, you know, current age of your skin. And it's really interesting to see patients who have gotten into a series of BBLs and, you know, and obviously doing some other things to their skin, but BBL is one of the most um, prevalent parts of their treatment. They're, they invariably end up at 10 years younger than their chronologic age. Um, and sometimes these are people where they start off where you literally offend them because, you know, it starts them off at five to 10 years older than their chronologic age. And, um, you know, I, for most people, it spurns them into action. Others, it kind of offends, but it's true. And, you know, the, as you continue to do it, that, chron that um, you know, basically visual age starts diminishing. And just the overall uh, you know, appearance of the skin, the turgor of the skin, it just gets better. And I love the fact that BBL can be blended with so many other treatments. It really is kind of the, the one treatment if people had to decide what, where to kind of start their aesthetic journey. That's the one that we always recommend because it, 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 it just changes, again, the appearance of the skin, the quality of the skin, and it sets the foundation for all the other treatments that are going to follow. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this, I use that as my entry level treatment. And, you know, usually after two, they're so thrilled. They're it's like, so what else can you do? And that's when you start, you know, talking about micro laser peels. You start talking about uh, some thulium treatments. Um, and that can be done at the same time, by the way. So it's not like they have to come back, you know, in a series of visits. You can actually just, you know, layer one on top of the other. And uh, I think, again, that kind of just, again, turbocharges the response. You know, they, um, you know, a little bit more downtime, not significant. You know, I, we haven't really talked about BBL, the downtime, but people go, you know, what am I going to look like? You you look just kind of like, I call it lightly burned French toast. And um, uh, some people call it, I can't remember, coffee ground skin. But, you know, the browns just literally kind of coalesce and then um, turn into little dark freckles and just come off in about, a, you know, a week to 10 days. Uh, even for those people, if they kind of saying, what can I do to, to uh, clean this up faster? Um, we'll actually just offer them a, a diamond glow treatment by our esthetician. And just by doing that, it'll often get them hooked on diamond glow treatments. So, you know, it kind of allows us to try something else on top of it. And they'll kind of go, wow, that's, that's really even better. Um, I love that. Combining, combining treatments is always, is always the best. Um, best idea. We, we know that one and one doesn't always equal two. Synergistically, you combine them together and you're going to get to that end point much more quickly. But I have, I have never seen anyone that cannot make it through a BBL. It's not an uncomfortable procedure. And again, the downtime is so truly it's, it's, it's minimal. I, I do recommend you start earlier. It's easier to prevent than to correct. And for those people that start younger, really it's, there's literally no downtime. Once your skin has been cleared of that initial pigment, it truly does become a lunchtime facial. Right. Yeah, I'd have to say, I agree with you, but sometimes those are the first couple treatments where there's a lot of target, you know, those are a little zippy. Um, you know, for people who are really sensitive, we'll even give them some topical anesthetics just to kind of 
blunt that reaction. Men often need it um, because our beards really pick that energy up and you know, it, it's a different sensation. I mean, it's amazing. I don't know if you've ever done it where you treat your upper face, then you go down your beard area. It, it, it's this different sensation where there's hair involved. Most definitely. That brings up a good point that you, when it talks about the uh, ideal patient. Um, for a man, we always want to advise them that all of the filters can have some hair reduction qualities, which many times are desirable. If, um, if not, again, it gives you the ability to treat those reds and browns with um, other modalities that you have there in your practice. Um, they don't have to worry if they're worried about their beard, they can't proceed with the broadband light RC benefits. The areas of their face that they do treat definitely um, definitely have a, a positive effect. Right, I mean, you definitely, if you got someone where scruff is important to either just treat down to their beard uh, or just try a different modality. Um, one other thing I was gonna bring up too that um, you know, it's a little more kind of scientific, but people say, so what's the difference between BBL and IPL? And um, what I say to them is that BBL is probably still the most powerful system on the market. You know, th these run off to 220 volts. So there's just a lot of energy going into these systems. They're dual lamped, uh, which means there's a lot more consistent, intense light. And then all the, the uh, filters, which I think is still kind of proprietary to Cyton, are, um, pure sapphire tips. So you get this unbelievable, the clear uh, distribution of light, um, really great control over temperature of the skin. And uh, just it's you just get consistent results, um, which, you know, I think is a little different with a lot of, of the less expensive, lower powered IPL systems. And I'm glad you brought up the chill tip that is proprietary to us. We are the only device out there currently that guarantees that we're going to hold the temperature of the skin exactly what the provider wants based on that skin type within one degree of variability. Yeah, um, I think that kind of well, almost was a little bit of a segue then to the, you know the the second treatments that we offer, and you know I tend to kind of say to people then uh, one of the the really great ways to start treating skin. Um, along with the BBL or in conjunction with BBL is a fractional laser of some sort. And I, I kind of have said that we, in our practice, we have kind of three different levels, even might be four, but um, I say, if you really want the easiest one in, in, in town, clear and brilliant is just a very simple, gentle treatment and you get more aggressive, well, then there's Halo. And Halo is the Cyton um, sort of um, response to the, you know, the, to Fraxel, which everyone's heard of. But I always say to people, I chose um, Halo because it's a better system. It's a hybrid fractionated laser, and it allows me again to have a lot more control over uh, depths of both energies being used at the same time. And then for those people who are really going after texture, pore size, acne scars, and are willing to, to go through more downtime and and then they go to fractional lasers. And the Profrax is again my go-to for that. Um, but that's a laser that literally is going deep enough that you're drawing blood. And that's what you need to do when you're really going after, um, you know, trying to really improve right hits and specifically go after scars. Because I said, to get a res result in those situations, you have to draw blood. Um, you know, Halo again is a nice one because the, the downtime is controllable. Um, you know, this is something where I say to people, yeah, you may have a day where you just feel like you gotta lay low. Um, probably the, the most noticeable thing is right after the treatment, uh, you've gotta, um, you, I, I jokingly say, I have to pull the, the Zimmer out of their hands because even though they get through the treatment very comfortably because we pre-treat for at least an hour with a 24 seven topical an anesthetic, um, all of a sudden that heat just really, you know, comes, comes through. And uh, I think that's that period of time when all those, those small little um, holes that we've created with, with Halo are open and it takes a little time for them to seal, um, to you know, kind of stop that, you know, the fiery face. Um, but we can again control it with spring water and, you know, some post laser gels that are safe to use and, you know, people kind of, you know, take it out half an hour or so just to kind of cool off. And then uh, if they just turn their AC vents on full blast going home, by the time they're home, it's, it, you know, the fire's out. Um, and I think that just allowing them to kind of mix and match 
uh, we have packages that they'll use where they'll buy just a series of six BBLs. And I'm like, hey, if you want to, you know, convert one to a Moxie, I'm fine with that. And usually you know, with comfort, they'll say, yeah, I'll try it. Um, we'll, you know, basically then exchange two or three of BBLs for a halo saying, well, it's just a more expensive, a bigger treatment. And, you know, let them say, okay, I'll, I'll just, you know, move it into a halo. So we are very fluid with what they, they're willing to do. Because uh, my feeling, once they get comfortable, um, they'll say, okay, let's, let's try it. And once you try it, you'll never go back. Now, you mentioned earlier a great point when you're talking about Halo and Moxie. You said as you're looking at um, someone's skin, melasma sometimes comes into play. And as a derm, I mean, you are the expert when it comes to melasma. So do you have a favorite go-to out of those fractionated devices that you kind of start someone on their journey with, knowing that there's epidermal and dermal melasma components and where mm -hmm. the laser labelings can reach? Well, here's what I say about this, this Daryl, is that if I'm kind of saying the bulk of their melasma is um, uh, epidermal, mm -hmm. um, I think a fractionated treatment, a very gentle fractionated treatment with a, a greater density is where I go. So, you know, with a moxie, I may actually go just with five millijoules with a with moxie, uh, which is kind of like a level two, three in uh, clear and brilliant. Um, but I just do more passes. I increase my density because what you're really doing there is you're not specifically treating pigmentation. You're just you're just removing superficial tissues. And so if I'm removing 30% of the superficial epidermis, I'm going to remove more pigmentation. Um, if it's if it's deep dermal, these treatments just, in my opinion, don't work. And that's when I have to start using my Q-switch or if you have a Pico uh, switch, you need to do that because you've got to start treating it like, like a tattoo. You, you've got to break that pigment up. Now, that'll also help with, with um, um, superficial pigment melasma. So what I often will do, just as a courtesy, when I'm using a, a gentle moxie on a patient, I'll just very quickly just paint their melasma with a little Q-switched um, to help kind of break that those pigment granules up because they'll just come to the surface more easily. And how often, if you don't mind on the same subject, with your patients that you deem a light moxie would be beneficial for them, I'm sure that you have a specific series or intervals between treatments since melasma is something you constantly are kind of keeping at bay. What is your recommendation for those patients with moxie? Well, we usually try to get them a series of six somethings. Um, either if they want to stay really gentle to keep them with a clear and brilliant level or a, a low level moxie. And I do it once a month, but um, I just say, you know, this is a very interactive ongoing process and I don't guarantee. And I just say, you've got to be doing your, your part and I will do my part. Is there any, is there any patient um, that you won't treat with a moxie besides the not being compliant with sun aspect, et cetera? Um, no, um, I really wouldn't. Um, I mean, again, Moxie is not my go-to for, you know, unless it's the real low dose for a part of the treatment melasma. But I think that, um, that if you're just looking at more for texture, pore size, just improvement of, you know, their visible skin, uh, I think you can use it on virtually all skin types. I, I, I love I love the fact that you say the cold laser because our, our beautiful skin of color are there, you know, our clients are more melanated. They're scared to do lasers. And it's wonderful that you have a system really that can with a moxie, with a halo, with a profrac that you can treat all mm -hmm. in times. I know you're going to vary your settings based upon that, but um, I just think it's great that you can cast a wider net and really right, offer right. beautiful skin for all. Well, and, and you can just you can basically be more comfortable and in, in have a lot of clinical safety to extend it into skin types you otherwise would be, you know, kind of holding your breath. I would love to, I would love for you, I mean, you have been one of our luminaries and Saitan is so appreciative of all of the, the work that you've done with us as far as studies. One thing that we didn't have a chance to touch on kind of going back to BBL and again, you were so instrumental in it is the BBL hero for body because I think People treating their bodies now is a whole new industry that we're seeing now. People are able to get in, they're able to change the texture of their skin. Primarily people pretty much take care of their face and protect it, but 
but we know a lot of people haven't really taken great care of their necks or their decollete or their arms or their legs. And, you know, I'd love for you to kind of touch on how hero, what hero means to your practice, the best patient for it, and kind of how it's kind of changing the game. Well, let me kind of go back because when I just had the stamping system for BVO, um, typically people would see the results in their face and they're like, oh my God, can you do my neck and my chest? And on that, I would say, okay, you know, and we'd go down and stamp away and, and it didn't, it took longer, but it, it was still doable. But then it was like, can you do my chest, do my back, do my legs? And I was there kind of thinking, I don't think I have enough time to do that. But then, you know, Hero just totally changed that because you can set up, you know, a, um, a pattern, or basically a delivery system where you're delivering, you know, anywhere from two to four um, per second. And you can just really move along and, you know, treat large areas very quickly. So suddenly that became a game changer to be able to say, yeah, I can, I can do that. The changes in the texture of skin. I mean, I'm sure, again, you are one of the first in the world to use this technology. I hope your patients know that you, mm -hmm. you know, you really helped guide Cyton as far as what parameters to use. But for me, what was amazing was just the quality of the skin on the body, how it changed and the static lines, the static wrinkles. You know, we saw those starting to improve, of course, not going away completely with the BBL, but just changes I never saw in the stamping technique. But I think that's, again, where I think I'm really impressed with Saiton that, you know, they're willing to, to take on those challenges and, you know, pull it apart and kind of deal with all the, the parameters necessary to create a system that's safe. So I, I can assure you there's more coming. Uh, I think the other thing that um, we just completed a study for them and had, I think, about 12 or 15 volunteers. And, you know, so we're always kind of looking for people who, to, to step up to a you know, a, a series of treatments, which is by the way, free. And um, they just have to be willing to participate and comply with our, our rules of, you know, how they have to manage their skin. But it's a great way for people uh, in our practice to kind of experience something new and different and uh, let us then, you know, gather data for Cytom, decide if it's a system they want to proceed with. Here at, at Cyton, we always try to strive to be on the forefront of technology. And as one of our luminaries, Dr. Swingle, where do you see Pulse Light going in the future? The, Daryl, the, what I would say is that, you know, the technology we have is amazing, it's wonderful, but, you know, technology is always moving forward. And okay. so I think that what I look at, and I think I agree with the investigators at Cyton, is as you're moving forward, are you creating something that's um, more efficient? Um, faster, uh, more effective, and safe. I, I really concluded that a lot of the laser technology as far as wavelengths and selection of, of you know, various um, laser energies, it's pretty much out there. So now it's kind of fine tuning what we've got. How can you make it uh, uh, more efficient, um, more predictably safe, and um, faster for people? Because um, there are some great systems out there um, that I, I feel like um, they work, but I don't have the time to do it. So, you know, I'm always looking at systems of like, so what could be done to make this, you know, predictably safe, faster, and more efficient for, for me and my practice. And I, I think that um, the nice thing is that Cytown is always looking at further improving the, the technology of what they already have on the market. Um, so many companies, I feel, um, kind of come out with a new model and say, well, your model is old, um, either step up to the new one or just live with your old. Well, Cytot doesn't do that to me. Um, there are ways to, you know, software upgrade and to, to give me that new, better technology without having to totally replace a system. So I think I love their commitment to, you know, upgrading, not replacing. And um, I think that um, what I get the sense is they're really focused on how to make things better. Well, I really want to thank you for taking time to speak with me today. And, but most importantly, thank you for everything that you do to help us at Cyton to make sure that we are kind of keeping our uh, the safest technology out there. And we're really staying ahead of the curve. Right. Well, I appreciate that. And I also would have to thank Cyton for their you know, con uh, continued support of what I do in my office. 
and I love getting involved in the, the research um, and the technology that's that's coming along. And Daryl, I also say to you, I really appreciate the fact that you're out there um, training people and getting the education of how to use this technology appropriately, because I think Cyton really probably has some of the best support in the industry to make sure that that system you just purchased, we want to make sure that you're successful with this system because it, it, it's better for the position, it's better for the company to, to be mutually successful.